Hello, all of you being gloriously wonderful people, and Merry Christmas. Or Happy Sunday if you don't celebrate Christmas. Either way, you know, it's fine. And also, Wilded Off Road's a day early this week because it's snowing. This is our first Wilded Off Road in the snow. And I thought, you know, let's do it a day early. Let's put some Christmas music behind it. I have no idea what that music's going to be yet, but I'm sure, hopefully, I have uh, added Christmas music to this. That was a pathetic wheelie. And if you're new to the channel, this is Willet Off-Road. Normally it does not take place in the snow, uh, but we do eight. Oh, that was some interesting lag from the game. Uh, we do like eight to ten cars while it's snowing. Gives us about a month, five weeks or so of snow videos. So that, you know, as we go from Christmas into New Year and into uh, the depths of winter in the first part of the year, we can, you know, all remember how snowy it was for like six days in GTA. Um, you know, it just, it's kind of a seasonal thing. And then once the, the snow videos are over, then I resume with regular Will Off-Road. So if you're new to the series, it's a pretty simple premise. We take some cars, usually from the most recent DLC. That's how we've been doing it lately. It is different seasons of Will Off-Road based upon the DLC cars. But we take them to Mount Chiliad, drive them up, see if they can make it to the top. If they can make it with a decent time, that's even better. And uh, then there's a spreadsheet in the description down below that you can go to to see how all 300 and some odd vehicles have done. Though in the snow, we've only now tested 57 as of this video. Um, and man, my game was having issues on the day that we recorded. Also having issues with this car. We'll talk about it in a minute. We got plenty of time, trust me. But yeah, that's the gist of Bullet Off-Road. And then we drive it back down to see how it does for, you know, being under control to come down the mountain. And then, just for a, a, a few giggles, we then go back up the mountain. You don't see that part usually. Uh, we go back up the mountain, but what you do see is when we drive it off the side of the mountain on purpose to see what type of damage they take. And that's Bullet Off-Road in a nutshell. But there's one other element. Actually, two other elements to Bullet Off-Road. you know what? Strike that, make that three other elements Wild Off Road. First of all, also linked in the description down below, there's Wild Off Road Bingo. That's right, you can play along at home and make it an interactive experience. Look at me, pro YouTuber. Totally stole the idea off of uh, Ruffy. But, uh, I mean, he's not the one doing bingo out there on video games, so it's fine. But, uh, yeah, there's Wild Off Road Bingo. You just Go to that site, click Generate New Card, and then tap or click on things that happen in the video if you have them on your card. And if you get bingo, you leave it in the comments down below. It's a simple concept. The other element to World Off-Road is, when I first started it, it was just a me thing. I would just take cars up and down the mountain by myself. And it slowly transitioned into a, a community thing. So now we kind of all gather together and, you know, I... I I tell them what cars are going to be doing on a different day. People sometimes try to match, like, manufacturer, even the same car as the support vehicles that follow me up. You can see them on the map behind me. I currently have two people in the lobby with me, but a third does join by the end. Um, and you're welcome to take part in that. All you need to do is be a member of the Vainglorious Discord server. Well, that was just one person because it was getting crashed. You just need to be a member of the Vainglorious Discord server. Again, link in the description down below. It's probably also flashed up on the screen by now. Yeah, it definitely has. Um, and uh, play on PC because we record. We're we're all on PC. We record from there. But even if even if you don't play on PC, you should still join the Vainglorious Discord server because one, that's our community hub. Yeah, I'm a YouTuber and Twitch streamer and all that stuff, but. Our community hub is on the Discord server, so you should, we'd love to have you be a part of it. And then if you play on uh, PC, then by all means, you can join us for not only these videos, but also our community live streams that happen every Saturday at 1 p.m. right here on YouTube, where we play GTA Online and sometimes other multiplayer games. But we'd love to have you as part of our community. And don't worry, I still have plenty of time to talk about the car. Um, it's... It's fine. Uh, the third thing about Wood Off-Road is there is a special ad-free version available to supporters of the channel. And you can get access to that. And again, it all goes through Discord. We have a supporters only section that you gain access to by either becoming a member here on YouTube, a subscriber over on Twitch, 
or make a monthly pledge at Patreon. And then for those three, you need to have your respective service linked to your Discord profile. For that, and it'll just kick in, you'll automatically get access. For the fourth way, it's all done through Discord, which is Discord service subscriptions, which will also, dear, I almost fell off them, which will also give you access to that same supporters channel. And that's Will It Off-Road. That, that is everything about Will It Off-Road. You, you now know all about it. What it is, why we do it, because it's fun. Um, that there's a spreadsheet, that there's bingo, and that there's a special ad-free and less edited version. Oh, and I forgot to mention that the supporters video, instead of me doing a voiceover, you get to hear our conversation on Discord. So, the Tahoma. I honestly thought it was going to DNF right here. Uh, and I've never, in the history of Bullet Off-Road, had a vehicle get all the way this high up on the mountain and then DNF. So even though technically my rule of Bullet Off-Road is that it gets three attempts on a section, and if it can't pass it after the third attempt, we DNF it. But what's happening is... I keep getting caught on those damn bushes. <laughs> and I know that if I can just get enough speed and get past those bushes, that I can make it. And so I just wanted to give it just one more try. The bush did slow me down, but not as much this time. And I managed to get a very fortunate bounce. And look at that, in a muscle car, in the snow, we are up to the top of Mount Chiliad, finally, in six minutes, 13 seconds, so will it off-road? No, I mean, I know the screen says yes, and it went ding, but clearly that was something you should never, ever try at all. Zon coming in, because his game crashed, and now he's back in perfect landing, and we take off just as he lands, so, you know, it just kind of happens that way sometimes, but at least he got to make a nice entrance. Um, I was terrified going down here. I really thought that this car was going to just kind of have crap brakes and just go right off the side. It, it, was, it was a little scary. Now, for the damage descent, I did not spend another six minutes driving this car back up the mountain. I resorted to um, what we use from time to time, and that's a cargo bob. And I carried it up the mountain, which only took like three minutes. So it's much better. So let's talk about stats as a business battle pops up. As I mentioned earlier, we have tested 57 vehicles in the snow. Pales in comparison to the 370 something that we have tested in dry conditions. But 57 in the snow and the Tahoma comes in 44th. Um, and there were nine vehicles that DNF. So it's not really, you know, up there in, in, uh, in the numbers. It is 8.18 seconds slower than the Declassic Granger and 11.95 seconds faster than the Gauntlet Hellfire. So, just goes to show that speed is not always the key here. It's, it's all about grip and... It's all about grip, let's face it. The cars that have the best grip do the best, whether it's in the snow or not. Uh, in terms of muscle cars, we have tested nine as of this video, because the next car is a muscle car as well. This ranks fourth, so, you know, right there, top half. Uh, it is two minutes, hear that right, two minutes, 36.23 seconds slower than the Vamos, of all things. And then, of course, the, the next one in line is the Hellfire, which we just mentioned earlier um it's it's proven to be a handful going back down the mountain as well though we are definitely getting down Ooh, look at that two wheel actually i saved it though that was some sleek driving um we at least got down you know in like half the time that it took to drive the car up to begin with <laughs> so that's a good thing i i would think but yeah we have a lot of fun with a little off-road and the series has been going now. It's my longest running series on YouTube. It's taken breaks now and then. We do seasons, as I mentioned earlier, where when a DLC comes out, we do all those DLC cars. And at the end of the season, we take the two fastest and the two slowest, and we load this up as a race. I've got our uh, Will It Off Road race that I am about to completely redo, by the way. Um, but it's still the same concept, up, down, up, down. Um, 
but we race it instead of them being sport vehicles. They're now my competitors. Good landings by both people. An Avenger appears. And let's see what this wheel is like. Yeah, that, that was pretty sad. Um, and then well, after the races, well, off road usually goes on a break. It lasted a long time for criminal enterprises just because criminal enterprises uh, drip feed lasted up until what two three weeks before the next dlc so yeah it was kind of ridiculous and i'm sure rockstar is going to pull that same shit again uh so he swore on jesus's birthday i sure did um I don't know, i'm a horrible horrible agnostic what can i say uh but yeah now we're just doing the damage to sit and this thing Definitely, as uh, Commander Hobo says, it's having a garage sale of body parts. I just ran over my own door. The hood's long gone. Well, I think I think I lose the other door. I could be wrong. Nope, there he goes. <laughs> Lost the other door. And it, honestly, it looked at one point uh, like a bumper fell off. Like something else came off the car other than just the door. Unless it was just a weird angle. But it looked like something long and thin. You get your mind out of it, Gunner. Uh, oh, wait, thread the needle. Oh, thread the needle. If I can make it through a tunnel at full power, which I was going full throttle. It's just it's a muscle car in the snow. It can't get going very fast. Without hitting anything in any of the tunnels, that's a thread the needle. And that's on going off for bingo. But yeah, it's just, it's taking a beating. It's taking a beating. Thought I saw a bumper come off, but I guess not. They're both still there. Hello, Hobo. How you doing? But we are finally down. One minute, 44 seconds. Let's take a look at the damage on the Tahoma. Most of the windows and lights are gone. The doors and the hood, I left them up on Mount Chiliad. Uh, the trunk will not close and it has some bent wheels going on. Uh, but look at that beautiful 80s gray interior. I guess 1979 is what this is based on. There's our support vehicles, including one that never really went up the mountain, but you know, we can pretend. And Donkey's staring at me with that creepy gooch mask either way. But that's going to bring us to our next vehicle. The one you all clicked on the video title for, the Vapid Lost Slam Van. And as you could probably see as it's spinning around, this is not my vehicle. You can also see that my car is on the minimap. Yeah, my car is up there. It's going to be the red Slam Van that we go flying by. You can kind of see it there in the distance. This is Sparing Donkey's slam van that i don't ask i don't know what that was for the start other than pathetic is is all i can really say um and you're probably looking and saying wow this video still has like eight nine minutes left in it is this gonna be another slow run oh just you wait just you wait this one this one was something i really put a lot of work into this i was convinced that if i was really careful on the throttle that i could get this thing up the mountain in the snow a lot of cars uh face their make or break point on the first steep bit that we're going to be coming up to uh, it just they have a hard time carrying any speed around the corner not right here but this next corner right there dead ahead of us they have a hard time carrying any speed around that corner due to a lack of grip. And then because of the lack of speed, they don't have the momentum to continue up the hill, nor do they have the grip to pull up the hill. So you can see I have no momentum here whatsoever. But if you listen, I am doing my best to keep the wheels from spinning. Unfortunately, with the slam van, it doesn't have the grip. And it doesn't have enough low end grunt. And by the way, I am full on the throttle right now, trying to stop. Because if you don't, if you're going backwards, that's brakes. For, yeah, you know how it works. You play GTA. And if you don't, you've seen enough people play it. Yeah, I'm still full on the throttle here. I know you don't hear any engine sounds or any braking noises, but I was 100% full on the throttle. Which you could tell because as soon as it stopped, the, the wheels started spinning and trying to go forward again. Still full on the throttle and <laughs> they just won't stop. Slam vans notoriously have bad brakes uh, and bad grip and you know, but they're beautiful trucks and it's, I would love, I would love to 
finally win one of these on the lucky wheel. Maybe one of these days. Or maybe one of these days Rockstar will just be, stop being asshats about it and then just let us buy it. I'd pay good money. I, I would pay big money. Make it a Benny's upgrade. Let's take a regular slam van and do a Benny's upgrade out of it. I don't really... Ooh, a lost slam van custom. Hmm. With different livery options and all the stuff that's available on the slam van custom. Oh, Rockstar, please make that happen. Oof. <laughs> he didn't intentionally... There's nothing he can do. It was just like when I was coming down the mountain. He was trying to stop. Uh, unfortunately, that bumps at him on around. I thought maybe um, I might be able to carry a little speed around the corner. So I backed way up, hoping that, that maybe that would be the case. But you can hear the wheels just lose their grip. And because of that, I lose all the momentum that I had in this thing. Um, it's just... It is unfortunate. It, it really, really is. And by now, we should have honestly called it a DNF, but I was determined. I was very, very determined that this car was going to get, well, truck, van. It's a van. It's always been called the Slam Van, even though it is a truck. I thought maybe I could wheelie. And did you see that? I went backwards in a wheelie. Uh, yeah, that was, I'm gonna try it again. And I go backwards in the wheelie. It just... I was so disheartened by this point because I really, really like these trucks. And I really wanted to be able to be like, look, they're not that bad. You know, and, and no, they're that bad. Though, after I recorded the video, I did go get my Slam Man Custom. Uh, and I did get it up to the top of the mountain. I posted a, a picture uh, in the Vanguard's Discord server. It probably took me... Like five minutes, ten minutes or so. I don't know. I, I wasn't running the timer or anything. But it, it took me a while to to get it to get it up there. Um, but so at least the the custom can make it. I doubt the regular slam man pickup could. Gosh, this is this is bad. I'm doing my best to just do throttle control here. No wheel spin and just do everything I can to get this thing going. And it's working, but it just, it, it runs out of steam and then doesn't have the grip to continue moving. I think if I could just get some speed, I could get it up there. But sadly, that's not the case. It's just, it's just not happening. It just isn't. Um, I try... I've given it, you know, every effort that I could, I think. Um, I'm still trying to get find a place with grip. And, and you can see I did start to make some momentum again. And I am just feathering the throttle. Just the lightest touch on my controller to try to get this thing to go. But there's just no saving it. Now we're just spinning the wheels going backwards. It just... I don't know. If you can do this in the snow... And this is fully upgraded. Donkey assured me it is fully upgraded, so it doesn't have anything to do with upgrades. Off-road tires don't make a difference. People think they do, but they don't. But yeah, it's it, it's it's sad, isn't it? <laughs> you can see. I just I'm like I will do this, but no. Finally, I gave up. We're calling it the NF, and uh, that doesn't mean we can't throw it off the side of the mountain, though. Again, using cargo bob. Was able to bring it up, and if you're wondering why the, everything kind of looks washed out right now, that's because a lot of my viewers are on mobile, and when it's really a dark scene, uh, it can be hard to see what's happening on mobile. So, I use just a uh, Photoshop artificial light um, source, is what it is, kind of to simulate moonlight as best I could, just to brighten up the scene a little bit, um, So, it, but it does lead to the colors looking kind of washed out a little bit of faded and a little bit grainier probably when youtube finishes processing it for me it looks fine as far as you know resolution and all that but usually when i do this uh even though my videos are in 1440p it usually adds just youtube compression and makes it a little grainy so i'm sorry 
Sorry that it looks a little weird, but I wanted people to be able to at least see the car. Um, thankfully, Adobe is really good about where there's already light, uh, not adding more. So like, you can see the sawmill is not any brighter than it normally is. The interior of the truck's not any brighter than it normally is. It just it does its best to replicate an, an external light source. In this case, I chose moonlight. And donkey's shooting at the trees, I guess. I just heard a gunfire. And he's like, ah, they're going out. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh my god, I managed to thread the needle again. Oh, does that really count? Was that an engine rattle? I guess where I heard an engine rattle. But anyways, we're almost down, so I want to once again wish you a very Merry Christmas. And if you've not had a good Christmas, if, if this year has not brought you glad tidings of comfort and joy and all that good stuff that we think of at Christmas time. I truly, sincerely hope that that next year is better for you. I really, really do. And I hope that you'll be with Vainglorious Gaming going into 2023. I can't believe I'm about to go into my, what, eighth year. April will be eight years. There's a look at our support vehicles from the front, from the back. And that's going to wrap it up. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for a wonderful 2022, which, by the way, we hit 2 million views on the channel uh, in total just on the day that I'm recording this voiceover. So awesome. Just Christmas Eve, by the way, yesterday, which is, you know, today for me, tomorrow for you, latest today for you. Anyways, thanks for watching. We'll be back next week for more World Off Road in the Snow. And until then, I'm Brandon reminding you to stay vainglorious.